Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is James Steiner and welcome back to Hate Plus. I just got home from a very... Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I just currently got back from visiting some old writers group friends. It was actually really, really fun. So, And because of that, I'm going to do a really short episode today because it's already 8.30. I just got home like 20 minutes ago. We just got cleaned up and now i'm going to be reading this stuff and is there anything new in here show on red okay so there's no extracted file so i'm i'm gonna be right back i'm just going to extract some files and hopefully there's going to be something very very interesting okay let's extract some new messages and see where this wonderful ride takes us Okay, what did I finish? Okay, so there's some stuff in block four. Is there anything left for block two? Block two, block two. It does not look like it. Looks like we are moving on to block three. Yeah, the majority of the stuff left is block three. Okay, so let's just get block three stuff all done. Ooh, this is going to be fun. Yun Ah, it seems, is going to be our next contestant. Yeah, uh, this is going to be so weird. His, you have this whole thing because now Mute is dead by based on that message that we read. And we've got this one person who seemed a woman of all things that wants to bring basically society and all the feminine... Well, all the feminist ideals backwards, so that's just basically a monarchy that is misogynistic, pretty much. And that's insane. Why would any woman want that? It makes no sense. So let's see if we can find out what made her think that was a good idea. I'm just going to read one tonight, and then I'm going to render this and post it. And next week, which is, you know, first week back to school, yay! And I might be able to read two next time, depends on how my work schedule goes, as now I'm looking for a new job, because I can't stand my current job. I'll tell you guys later what I am able to, and why it sucks so bad. So let's just get right into it. Co-conspirator, oh, Yoon Ah, hmm. Dear little sister, Mi Soon. This is the first time we've read about this person. Click their name again in another log file and I'll remind you about them. Okay, so I'm thinking that that is probably the little sister, probably. Me soon, and then that's you and Oz, the older one. Probably. Probably. Dear little sister, me soon. Sorry about not coming home until late last night. I didn't realize you were already asleep by the time I got into bed. I'm sorry for disturbing you. I'm afraid it's going to be another late night as the reception yesterday evening went much later than expected. And now I have to catch up on all the work I was going to do. Okay, so this is October 1st, 4038. I have no idea where that is in relation to the death of Mute and all that stuff. I'll have to check that later. It's the same old irrational nonsense from the Department of History I was telling you about before. I'm going to have to fire the department head, and there is so much paperwork involved. I even have to run it through my father, Counselor O, annoyingly. The reception went wonderfully, though, much better than I expected. You know how I feel about social events like those usually. I find them utterly pointless and my obligatory attendance to be a waste of everyone's time. Politics are truly loathsome and I really despise how overbearing they've become lately. So I was at the reception desperately trying to avoid being dragged into some tedious nonsense by my father and instead focusing on the chatting up a bookish gentleman who seemed to share my disdain for the whole thing. Wait, what? That wasn't what I was expecting from her. Did you spoil something? Uh, oh, used, oh, used to be counselor of education until he got replaced by a family member. Okay. I laughed at his unfunny jokes, nodding along a lot, let him think he was encouraging me to drink a little bit more than I'd like. You know, the usual. At first, I just thought it was a good chance to, no offense, finally get laid by a man for once, but then I found out who he was, and I think there's a lot more opportunity here. Who was it you were chatting up? I was actually surprised to find out that he is Ryo Hyun Su, the counselor of captaincy. Oh, okay, okay. So, you. 
Oh, okay, so this is before the coup, apparently. This has to be before the coup. Because, yeah, because she ends up basically being on his side and ends up fucking mute up later on. Okay, so this is probably a while before, I would guess, based on the fact that she doesn't know who this is. Okay. I didn't mention it sooner because everyone's got opinions, and I was worried that you'd be the type to needlessly bitch about politics even at a party. I know him. That's the Emperor Tejo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And was having an affair with Oh Yun Ah. His brother Rao Kuang Su was involved with bribing counselors. Okay. He said very. Okay. Let me read that again. I didn't mention it sooner because everyone's got opinions, and I was worried that you'd be the type to needlessly bitch about politics even at a party, he said very agreeably. You can't escape those people these days. I'm glad you're not one of them. Okay, so what's... This is already getting very, very, um, interesting. Because it seems like they might be co-conspirators, but what made her think? That this was a good idea. I'm hoping that through these letters we'll get a pretty good idea of what really happened. Why she thinks this is a good idea. Me? Oh no, I think people get distracted by them too easily instead of focusing on the things that really matter, I said. Summarizing my thesis about the myopic social destruction caused by the increasing discourse of democratization in a single line. So you don't like the democracy. And you think that having uh, misogyny is much... Um, God, what was it? Having a misogynistic dictatorship is a better idea. What? It, it still doesn't make sense. She um, sure uses a lot of big words. I don't get it. And what is it that matters to you? He tentatively tried to put his arm around my shoulder and I shifted to let him while I thought about what to say in order to not intimidate him too much. The future, I finally decided on. Everyone's always about the now these days. Spoiler warning, the future sucked. <laughs> yeah, it kind of did. But what did she want? That's what... Did he trick her? That's Okay, I'm thinking that he might have tricked her. They certainly are. Always with the power mongering, always with the politicking, always everyone cares about now is scoring small points so they can take a step up. Nobody cares about stability, he told me what I already knew. Stability, that reminds me actually. I've been trying to push more of the classics into the curriculum, you know? Confucius and stuff. I wish things were more like they were in those days where knowing your place was the most important thing, you know? Oh, did she put this into his head and then did he take it too far? I'm thinking that might be what happened. Wow, I have to say, there's not a lot of women who would say something like that, he told me. It's unfortunately true. Unless she actually wanted it that way. This is so bizarre. Why would someone want it like back then? Because then you literally have no sway whatsoever. I don't know if she realizes that. Uh -huh. but that's really what I think is important. Like you said, stability. I worry about the future. I wish more people would. Yeah, right. If only. You can't tell people. You can't tell anyone this, but I'm going to be announced as the new chief counselor soon, he said, as if there was anyone still left on the ship who hadn't had the rumor beaten over their heads already. This is kind of boring. Okay, so now I got the time frame. Okay, so this is right before. He became the chief counselor. Okay, so this is right before that big changeover. Man, this is really far back compared to most of the other stuff. So this thing basically rolls back to while they were talking about getting him in and then making him the scapegoat, more or less, about, you know, basically cut, crushing the democracy, crushing the liberals underfoot and crushing any rebellion as well by making him the scapegoat and then getting rid of him. Even though he is actually pushing it a lot further, and he's not going democratic, he's going full-on dictatorship, which is insane. Anyway, continuing on. But all the council cares about is pandering to their crisis of the week rather than caring about anything long-term. I hate being put into this position. It's something I'd been considering ever since he told me who he was, but I think there's a real opportunity to use him. I mean, 
not in a cynical, power-hungry, political sort of way, but I believe his discomfort at the current state of things could be leveraged to cause major societal reform on a level that I can't do alone. I think we could change the Mugungwa for the better. It would be radical, but he gives me optimism. Maybe this is a dumb question, I said, leadingly. But if you're going to be the head of state, why can't you just change things? Easier said than done, he said. I mean, I'd like to. I would love to see this endless political horror show of ours end for good. I'd truly love to. The ship deserves a lot better. There's only so much one man can do, though. What about one man and one woman? Is there anything I could do to help? I asked. There is, of course. Even then, on the spot, I could think of many things two conspiring parties in the education system and in the legislature could do to enact a radical overhaul of society. Wait. She's saying, Slowly, of course. It could take many years at the least, but combined, we have the massive potential to shape the discourse and create circumstances that make it clear what must happen to the Mugungwa to ensure its future. What I needed to know is if he was really a man who had the determination to do that. I don't care about his ideas, those aren't what's important. What's important is that he's man enough to want to, instead of just whining about it. I was worried he might not be. Maybe it's just the liquor speaking, I said soberly, but you seem like you're the kind of man who takes what he deserves. And what do I deserve, he asked, staring at me intensely. I stopped worrying about that moment. It was obvious where it would end, and he was good. Just knowing that he'd play the game with me after that conversation, I think it's a good sign. Well, you tell me, I said bashfully. Then he leaned in closer and stole a kiss from me. I quickly looked away, putting my hand over my face, pretending to blush. Gross. You're right, he said, removing my hand. I am that kind of man. A man. I believed him. At that point, I slowly started to move away, making sure I looked bashful enough that he'd hesitate a little before letting me go. What is she even doing? This is so gross. She's manipulating him with sex, ladies and gentlemen. That is what you call... Pandering to more... Base needs. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is actually really gross. So, um, I... Should probably get going. It's getting kind of late, I said. He looked disappointed. It was perfect. When I first spoke to him, I thought I'd simply get laid. But if we are to have a lasting relationship, and I think that's in my best interests, because I think we have the potential to do so much more together, then I obviously can't just give that up right away. I want to apologize again. You can see why I was in a mood when I got home. Maybe if you want, though, we could talk again about how I could help, I offered, hoping he'd name a date. He did. We're going to meet again to conspire after he's been officially declared chief counselor. There's too many bins in there. But I'm feeling good. The night before last, I wasn't feeling optimistic about our chances of salvaging the awful hedonistic society we've constructed for ourselves. But given that I think with the chief counselor on my side, we can actually turn things around. I think it's only fair that I have to trade in my own bit of hedonism for that. Thanks for being so understanding and patient with me, little sister. As a result, I'm feeling more confident about the new school policies and I'm not afraid to deal harshly with the Department of History dragging its heels. What irrational idiots. It might be way too much paperwork, but I'm going to be glad to see heads roll. I'm looking forward to seeing more of that in the future. Mostly, I'm really happy to actually have cause to be optimistic about the future at all. I don't like her. Neither do I. Anyway, that's why I'm going to be home late. Could you please have our maid send dinner down to the office? Who's the maid? Oh, Yoon Ah and Mi Soon had their own maid. And who was their maid? Why is that important? I'll try to be careful this time when I go to bed so that I don't wake you up, I promise. Thanks, I'd really appreciate it. With love, Big Sister Yoon Ah. There's something I want to talk about. Oh boy, let's do this first and then I will call it a night. Okay, let's talk. Sorry to get all suddenly serious on you, but I feel really weird reading some of those logs. 
It's just, especially reading about relationships, I get a very adult feeling from them. Really, it's hard, isn't it? And all this politics stuff, it's just so far above my head. It's hard to admit, but there's just so many things I don't understand at all. I mean, I'm over 600 years old, but I feel like such a child reading some of these things. Oh boy. Too bad I'm not, I've had my fair share of politics. I like the idea of following my childhood dreams, being an engineer like my real father, but now I'm reading about someone like Kim So Yi and how hard it was for her, despite being really smart at having a job and a supportive husband and science on her side. And it just makes me think, if even someone like her could barely deal with being a responsible working adult, what hopes does someone like me have? It's hopeless, isn't it? I'll never be a functional adult like them, will I? I believe in you, come on. Everyone grows up after a while. You do? Oh, I knew there was a reason why I fell in love with you. Thank you so much for saying that. I'm sure with someone as wonderful as you by my side, I can learn how to be in a real adult relationship too. I can always learn how. And I guess the first step is to try to understand, isn't it? Very well, let's go back to reading these logs then. I'm going to do my best to try to understand the things that they keep talking about. I'm sure I can if I try. That's actually a good place to... Oh, who's sending me a message now? AI psychology. Dispatch control. Uh-oh. I know you didn't ask for, ask for anything, but I talked to an AI psychologist to get some context for the whole robot girl shit show you've, been, you've got going on. Oh, boy. It's fine that you're the whole stoic loner type and all, but it might be good for her to get some help. Anyway, I've attached what they said. I figure you'd appreciate it. No need to thank me. Dispatch control out. What did you find? While meaningfully different on a lot of levels, AI construct psychology is generally modeled after human psychology, and I've personally found this is where problems manifest the most. Often, the biggest issue in AI-human relationships has very little to do with any universal particulars of AI psychology and more to do with the very different perspective on mortality. Oh boy. Simply put, even now, human society is not really meant to accommodate immortality. Were an ordinary human to live for hundreds of years, they'd likely have a very similar experience. Okay, I get you so far. When you do a single thing for centuries, you eventually hit the limitations of differentiable skill. For example, a 500-year-old artist is more experienced than a 300-year-old artist, but the difference is so subtle, it's drowned out by all other factors to most people. Okay, that makes sense. At a certain point, too much experience actually becomes a detriment, becoming too overwhelming to parse and prioritize in most cases. So that's kind of what happened with Mute. She ended up becoming so engrossed and so focused on being the head of security for so long that it, she kind of stunted and it couldn't really go any further. It kind of makes sense. Even given consistent processing power increases as per Robertson's law, there is simply an upper bound and scalability when it comes to processing memories and after centuries this begins to take a toll okay i get you so far what this translates to generally is a feeling of overwhelming despondency although too much younger beings ai's included these sentiments can feel more akin to old man shouting get off my lawn yet it comes from a greater sense of NUE than that, a feeling of one's own mastery and knowledge of the subject being trivial compared to societal trends that become increasingly alienating. It often contributes to a feeling of helplessness. Okay, and she was feeling helpless because she wasn't understanding the whole concept of all the politics and stuff. Okay. What was pioneered in 27th century AI psychology, then called robot robo-psychology was the idea of re-specialization. For beings that exist in social spheres with humans, the best way to stave off those feelings is to consider the much larger scale and instead focus one energies on a whole new field, where learning new skills has a much larger personal impact than refining something one has already mastered. So essentially, like, 
changing hobbies. What they're saying is, is that because they do the same thing for so long, they feel helpless because they can't get any better at it. But if you have them do something completely new, they'll start to feel like they're gaining you know, new skills much faster and they start to feel that satisfaction at that accomplishment. That's what it's getting at. So switching fields allows for the AI to then feel like they're actually gaining something and they don't feel this helplessness and they don't feel like they're worthless, that they can't get any better at what they're doing. So that makes sense. For example, I personally used to work as a photographer until moving on to human psychology, then later AI psychology. I still take some pictures now, of course, and keep up with the work of people like Mark Lee, but I find it's much easier to be positive thinking and optimistic if I don't consider advancement of that medium to be important in my life anymore. I'm sure someday I'll feel the same way about psychology, finding a new limitations and attitudes to be frustrated by, but it'll be comforting to know that I could help people while I was emotionally able to, no matter how cynical and slow I'll inevitably get. Okay, that makes sense. Generally, I find a good time to consider re-specialization is around the 400 year marker, although obviously it depends on each individual. Okay, so every 400 years or so, the AI needs to switch and do something new. I don't know anything about your particular circumstances. It sounds like culture shock is also a very significant factor and that can change things a lot too. Oh, right, because she had the culture shock of being in one society, frozen, coming out in a different society, then becomes an AI, and now is reintroduced to the society that the character is in, my character is in, which is very much like her old society, so it's bouncing back and forth, so that is putting a lot of stress on her. That makes sense. Okay, got it. I would be very happy to speak with the construct in question at my private office on Earth, though. Consider it a personal favor for all you've done for me in the past. Dr. Autumn, the Susan Calvin Institute, North America, Earth. That is actually quite fascinating, okay? I actually like that little bit of minute world building detail. It's something that isn't really touched on a lot, but I actually really, really like that. Okay, so essentially, with her trying to learn this new thing about the politics, it will start to make her feel like she's actually accomplishing something and she's actually going to, you know, progress and maybe won't have a breakdown. Or maybe she will have a breakdown because of the culture shock and her learning all these things that kind of led into her being in the position that she was in when she was alive and essentially getting herself killed. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but there's a reason why there's a self-diagnostics thing that is an option. I have a feeling she's going to have a breakdown at some point. I can almost taste it, but I'm wondering what is going to trigger it. Is it going to be her finding the other bit of mute? I'm, I'm assuming that the stuff that's still encrypted is either before mute bit the dust and became the new mute, or this is new mute and how she changed after the reset. I don't know which. But it should be fascinating. Anyway, that's my time. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to click that like button, share, favorite, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.